What is going on everybody and welcome to the 22nd machine learning with Python tutorial video. Specifically, we're talking about support vector machines and classification. In the previous tutorial, we talked about vectors, magnitude, direction, and dot product. And before that, we, had, we showed the high level intuition of a support vector machine. Now we're really gonna start digging in. So first of all, what is like, what's the, we know that eventually the support vector machine creates a bound, like a separating boundary, this decision boundary or the separating hyperplane. But like, what is the, what is the operation a machine or a support vector machine is running to give us a classification after it's been trained on a new point? So to exemplify this, first we're going to, let's draw some vector space. I'm not going to worry about drawing any ticks or anything, but let's add some points now. So we've got our positives, and then we'll have um, some negatives. And the support vector machine, we hope at some point, is going to create the decision boundary. We'll just eyeball it for now, and we're going to say that's the decision boundary. So the way that a support vector machine, once it reaches this point, is going to classify new points is by first taking the vector that points perpendicularly to the separating hyperplanes. So that would be like this. And this is vector W. And then let's say you've got an unknown data point, And we'll say unknown is here. And it's also a vector from the origin. And what you're going to do is you're going to project vector U onto W or vice versa. And you're going to find out is vector U basically on the left hand side or the right hand side or on the top or the bottom or whatever way you want to look at it, it just depends on what your perspective is to this hyperplane but what side of the hyperplane is it on in this case we can visually tell that it if we were to project it onto vector w it would definitely not be it would not be on the other side of vector w so what would be like the the operation the calculation, once we've trained a machine learning classifier, it's going to say, basically, vector u for the unknown vector dotted with vector w, unknown, plus b for the bias, which we'll, we'll talk about that soon enough. That is the equation that we're going to run. And then what we're going to say is, if that is greater than or equal to zero, if that is the case, then this would be a plus sample. But as we look at this, we are relatively confident that, that is not going to be, and plus we can just tell visually that it's not going to be the case. So actually, it's going to be a uh, vector u dot w plus b is actually less than or equal to zero. And we'll draw our lines and be good as long as we can. And that would be a negative sample. So that's the operation that the machine learning classifier is going to run. What if what if vector u dotted with vector w plus b equals zero? Right? What if it's not greater than or less than? Then it would that would be that would mean that that was on the decision boundary. So coming back to our original drawing here, a piece of art, we know that the equation that we eventually need to solve for, eventually, is vector u dotted with vector w plus b. We need to find the, the value for that. So what is the, uh, what are the variables that we, we actually don't act, know at the moment? Well, unknown, we, we have that because unknown is going to be comprised of well, what is, what is unknown comprised of, right? What is this unknown vector comprised of? Well, it's comprised of x1 and x2. Those are the features, right? Unknown is a feature set. So we actually know what vector u is. We have the, the value for vector u. What we don't have is the value for vector w or the value for b. And we need both of those in order to solve this equation. So how do we get those two values? And it turns out that, that not only how do we get them, but they also come with a few constraints. So that's what we're going to be talking about next, the, the, the constraints that, that are brought, up, brought upon us by those two values. And what we thought was initially looking like a really simple equation turns out to evolve pretty quickly. So we're still on our quest to find 
both W and B in order for us to actually have our decision function. And what we know so far is something like X minus support vector. So X sub minus support vector would be dotted with W plus B. We know that that would be equal, it's a minus, so it would be equal to a negative one. We also know that vector x sub plus class, sv, dotted with vector w plus the bias, we know that is going to be a positive one. So how can we make an equation possibly to go through our data and actually just locate support vectors? So now we introduce y sub i, and y sub i is simply the class of the features that we're passing through. So if the class is a plus class, then y sub i is going to equal a positive one, or just simply one. If y sub i is of the minus class, then y sub i equals a negative one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this y sub i and we're going to multiply it by the equations that we were using to identify the, the positive and negative support vectors. So if you recall for the plus class, what was the equation for that? It was x sub i dotted with w, both of these were vectors, plus b that was meant to be equal to one. And then for the minus class, we knew that it was x sub i dotted with w plus b equals negative one. So now we're just simply stating a fact that y sub i equals one in this case because it's a plus class, and then down here, y sub i equals negative one because it's a minus class. So then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna multiply these equations by y sub i. So when you multiply an equation by whatever, what do you have to do? Well, you have to multiply both sides. So we would be multiplying this side and this side, and same down here, by y sub i, y sub i, and what we're gonna do is we know y sub i is one or negative one, so we're just gonna go ahead and apply that to the right-hand side of the equation first. So let's say one times one, what does that equal? Well, after multiplying this by one, we still have one. So what about on the bottom equation? Well, we have negative one times negative one, so again, we're graced with a one. We're not going to multiply out the left-hand side, but it's still y sub i. We just happen to uh, derive the answer on the right-hand side. And then now what do we do? Well, now let's go ahead and set both of these equations equal to zero. So we're going to say, I'll just use the same color here. We want both these equations to be equal to zero. We'll do the top one first. So how will we make this top equation equal to zero? Well, simple enough, you just subtract one from both sides of the equation. So one, we're gonna say minus one here. This cancels out, this was already converted. So we're all set here, this is zero after we minus one. And then all you would do is you add minus one to that side, right? So that top equation in total becomes y sub i multiplied by the x sub i w plus b and then minus one equals zero and then looking at the bottom equation what happens here well again we we this one is already done and then we're going to minus one from both sides so minus one this becomes a zero minus one here and lo and behold looks like we've got the exact uh, same equation so for both the positive and negative class, the equation to derive support vector would be right here. 
So I think we'll go ahead and stop here and we'll carry on in, in the uh, next tutorial as far as, okay, great, we've found these support vectors. What do we actually do with support vectors once we've figured them out? So that's what we'll be talking about in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, or whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.